Hi everybody, Mark Wallace here for Adorama TV. Today I want to talk to you about a new feature in Adobe Premiere CC that just uh, came out. It was just released a couple of weeks ago and when I saw this I was blown away because it's going to revolutionize the way that people like me who are editing on lower end machines and laptops edit video, specifically 4K. I don't know if you've noticed but we're living in a 4K world. YouTube now has 4K capabilities. GoPros are shooting in 4K. Most consumer cameras now can shoot all the way up to 4K. Consumer televisions are 4K. We are headed that way. 4K is on us and we need to be able to edit 4K. And the problem with editing in 4K video, because those file sizes are so large, two things have happened. One, they take up our hard drive, but most importantly, when we're trying to edit on a laptop or some other low-end machine, not even a low-end machine, this is a high-end MacBook Pro, but it's a 13-inch MacBook, it just can't keep up with 4K files. They're too big. And so Adobe Premiere Pro now has something that is really amazing. It's automatic and it's the ability to ingest videos and create proxy files. Now what the heck are proxy files? Well, the bottom line is they let us edit 4K on lower end machines. That's really what you need to know. But a proxy file is if you take a large 4K video, it's a large file here and it's very difficult for our computer to play those files um, because we just don't have the processing power to do that, specifically when we're trying to edit video and adding effects and stuff. A proxy file takes that big file and it creates a smaller version of that, a very lightweight version of that, lower resolution, and then we can take that and we can edit using those small files and add all of our effects and everything. It'll play just fine on our laptops or our normal iMacs or computers, whatever we have. We can edit just fine really, really quickly and then when we're done and everything's finished and it looks great on our screen, we can say, all right, we want to make the final product. And then Adobe Premiere Pro will take those original 4K files and use those for the final output. And so you get that 4K final output. And maybe you're not even trying to do 4K final output, but editing and shooting in 4K can be a huge benefit because you have a large resolution, a large file size, and then you can pan and zoom and do all kinds of things with that larger resolution and sort of crop out the details that you don't use and you're not losing any resolution. So there's a lot of reasons to shoot and edit in 4K, but until now, it's been a pain. So here is how it works now. So a few months ago, I was in the United States and I went to the dog park with my friend Norm Beer and my dogs, and I shot some 4K video of Cody and Tosca running around with all their pals at the dog park. And so those are all shot in 4K on my Panasonic Lumix FC1000. So I have those here in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm looking at these through my media browser. This window looks unfamiliar to you. I am in the assembly workspace. So you get there, Windows Workspace Assembly. And then I just dragged out this left-hand panel here for my media browser and then made sure I was looking at thumbnails instead of a list view. So that's what I'm looking at right now. So the issue with these large 4K files, so here's one of Tosca and a friend at the dog park. If I play that, the first few frames are gonna play just fine and then, oh my, oh, can't keep up and computer is melting. So it just won't keep up with what you're trying to do. And what we need to do is instead create a proxy file so that we can have this play along just fine. How do we do that? It's really easy and it's automatic. That's the nice thing now. It's automatic in Adobe Premiere Pro. How do we turn that automatic feature on? It's very simple. In the upper left-hand corner of the media browser, you'll now see this little uh, box here that says ingest and then there's a wrench next to that. So I'm gonna click on the wrench and that is going to open my ingest settings. Now these are also in the project settings. So you'll see there's the general, the scratch disk and the ingest settings. So if you don't want to get there through the wrench, you can always go to the uh, preferences and you can go to your um, project settings. I'm sorry, not preferences, but your file, project settings, ingest settings. So you can get there that way. And also when you're creating a project, these ingest settings will pop up from the very beginning. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to turn on ingest. Now that we have that, we have some, co uh, some options. Copy, transcode, create proxy, and create and copy, or copy and create proxies. So really what we want to do is when we ingest, when we import those files, what's happening? 
first one here, copy, takes the original file from whatever location it is on a hard drive and copies it to a new location. Uh, we don't want to just do that. Transcode takes it from uh, one file format, maybe H.264, and transcodes it to something like a uh, QuickTime or some other codec. It's not really what we're wanting to do here. These are the two things that we want to do. So one is create proxy, and that just says, hey, take that 4K file, and create a new file, a proxy file, and then save that somewhere. The second here is take that 4K file, copy it to a new location, and also create a proxy. I don't want to copy and create. For this, I just want to create my proxies. Now, it's going to ask me which kind of proxy. Uh, if you don't know what these different resolutions are, I suggest you choose this, the 1280 by 720. That's a 720p Apple ProRes 422 proxy. Uh, I don't have enough time to go into all those settings, but that's the one you should choose if you're just starting out. Then the other uh, thing that we are going to be asked here is where do you want to put these proxy files? So we can use a preset destination. So maybe you have an external hard drive that has nothing but proxy files. You could throw those into the cloud or you can keep them in the same project. You can put them anywhere you want. For me right now, I'm just going to keep them in the same folder as my project. Once you have that, you say, okay, now how do we make all this stuff happen? This can't be any simpler. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to highlight all of these files here and then I'm going to right click on these and then I'm going to say import. And so now I have all of my uh, files imported into my project and behind the scenes now Adobe Premiere Pro is already starting to ingest these and you can see that what uh, I did here is I just zipped over to Adobe Media Encoder. That was automatically launched. I didn't have to do anything. That automatically was launched. And now these, uh, all these files are being created. And so that is going to happen in the background. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to look at that. You don't have to go to Adobe Media Encoder. You don't have to do anything. It just happens. But if you want to see what's going on, you can. So what you need to do next is you need to wait for these files to finish encoding. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, that could take a while. That's the whole point of creating proxy files. You're taking all that processing, doing it in advance, and then you're creating these small files. So what we're going to do now is we're going to wait for all of these files to finish being created. And then we're going to go back in and I'm going to show you how you can use them and how quick it is to edit these. With the magic of editing, all of that is done. If I go over here to Adobe Media Encoder, you can see that all of these proxy files have already been created. That took about 20 or 30 minutes for that to happen. But it all happens in the background and uh, you, you don't have to wait for that actually. You can keep editing if you want and it'll just keep creating those proxy files as you edit. And so as the first file, prox the first proxy files come in, you don't really have to wait for everything to finish um, to start editing your project. Or you can if you want to, if you want to get a cup of coffee. Now I want to show you something that's going on here. So in my project file, I'm going to expand that by hitting the tilde key. And then I'm going to add uh, on my metadata display a field. So I'm going to just type in proxy here and add that just so you can sort of see what's happening. When I zoom in here, you can see that on all these files, there is a proxy attached. If there isn't, you'll see that it's not attached. And so that way, if, uh, if ever you need to detach your main files and just work on the proxies, for example, if you're working on a laptop and you don't want to bring a giant RAID with you or external hard drives, you can just use those small proxies and later on, you can reattach the proxy files. That's really sort of cool. Um, and to do that, you just right click on your file and then you'll go down to proxy and then you'll see that you can do one of uh, three things. You can create the proxies. So if you haven't, if you forgot to click that in just tab or something, you can create proxies this way, create the proxies, or if they've become detached, you can attach those. And then if you're uh, only working with the proxies and you want to attach the full resolution media, you do that there. So it's just a right click on your file name and you'll get into that. And so that's how that works. It's really cool. All right, let's go over to here to the editing, uh, the normal editing window here. And what we need to do is we need to be able to turn on and off the editing with the proxy or editing with the full resolution video. Now this is extremely easy. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to go over here to this little button editor that's this little plus sign right here. And if you click on that, um, what you'll get is this little pop-up here that shows you the available buttons 
for your little menu. And there's this new one right here called toggle proxies. You want to drag that down and make sure that it shows up there and then hit OK. And once that's there, uh, it's just going to show up right here. If you click that and it's blue, that means that you're editing with the proxies. If you click it again and it's white, it means that you're editing with your full resolution video. Let me show you the difference between these two things. So here is a, a little clip here. I am editing with the full resolution video. And you can see when I scrub through this, I'm not really getting a real-time scrub. If I start uh, playing this, there's my friend Norm, who is the uh, dog father, as I call him, of my dogs now. You can see this is not playing back in real time. It's just clunky. But if I just click and say, hey, I want to see the proxy files, and then I hit play, check that out. Now it's playing and it has no issues. I can scrub through that, I can go back and forth, I can do all kinds of things, and it's going to work just fine. And now I can just edit with this uh, window and it's going to work just fine. So now as I'm going through here, I can take this, I'll mark an endpoint, I'll zip over here, I'll mark an out point, and then I'll just take that, I'll throw it down on my project. And now all of this stuff, uh, what we're seeing here are the proxies. And so as I'm playing through my timeline, everything I'm doing, this is a proxy file that is being uh, used. And so any of these little clips here, these are all proxy files that I'm going to be seeing and, and working with. Um, and so if you see this right here, this media pending, sometimes it takes a couple seconds for those proxy files to attach or render, uh, but they'll come in just fine. Don't worry about it. So just like that. Now we have this uh, shot here of Cody. And then we can just go ahead and edit all of this stuff. Now remember, when you're done with your video and you want to throw this out and you go to your uh, export or to throw that over to Adobe Media Encoder, it's going to always use the high resolution files, always. So you don't have to worry about turning on and off that proxy little button there. Um, so if you turn that on and then you edit your entire video using the proxy files and then you forget to unclick it and you render out 4K, you're going to get 4K. You're always going to get that high resolution file that you originally started with. You're not going to render out with the proxy files so you don't have to worry about remembering anything. So that's all there is to it. Click the ingest button, make sure you choose the right settings, add that little button, turn it on, edit to your heart's content, and now you're editing in 4K on a laptop in real time without all the delays and lags and all the stuff that you've experienced in the past by editing those huge files. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. I think these proxy files and all the automation that comes with it is gonna change the way editors like me edit 4K video. In, in other words, we're going to be able to do it now, and I think that's worth the upgrade. So check that out. Thank you so much again for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for more tips and tricks about photography and video and shooting and lighting and all of that stuff. It's absolutely free, so check that out. Make sure you visit the Adorama Learning Center, and I will see you again next week.